Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome to the one of the most mysterious game in the chess history. It was played during the, the most important of 19th century tournaments, Hastings 1895. So uh, probably you've heard about that. If not, just uh, for your information, uh, Emmanuel Lasker played in that tournament. Wilhelm Steinitz, the world champion. Mikhail Chigorin, uh, the pretender to the world champion. Uh, Jacques Mises. Uh, Harry Pillsbury came from America and won this tournament. Uh, pretty uh, interesting person as well. I show you already one game of Harry Pillsbury where he beat uh, Emmanuel Lasker in the very beautiful game. Check over there if you are interested. This this is one of the uh, best game of Harry Pillsbury and uh, he should, in my opinion, become the world champion. But because of the health issues, uh, he couldn't deliver that. Uh, we had in this tournament Karl Schlechter, we had Tarasz, Blackburn, Teichmann and David Janowski. And now about David Janowski, uh, you've seen already one of the games. Uh, I show you how strong tactician David Janowski was. This is another uh, interesting game because he plays against Mikhail Chigorin. Two rounds to the end of the tournament and Mikhail Chigorin is on the lead and he plays against uh, two players who are somewhere, you know, at the end of the, of the standings. So he played already against the strongest opponents uh, and now it should be very obvious that he's gonna win this tournament. Uh, now he faced David Janowski and David Janowski was always extremely dangerous opponent. Uh, tactician, very strong tactician. Uh, however, he often uh, was also outplayed in the positional games or in the end games. Uh, now, let's see what happened in this game because this is quite a mystery for, for me. Mikhail Chigorin is going to play as white and David Janowski as black. So let's see what just happened. We had a e4, e5 and now knight c3, Vienna game. Uh, nothing unusual at the time. However, after knight f6, uh, what white would play now, because sometimes, you know, Vienna game is played, is g3, bishop c4, a uh, very, you know, obvious moves, knight f3, nothing fancy, f4 sometimes is played as a, you know, kind of the king's gambit. However, we have d3, inviting for d5. Now, what is the idea? After d5, black actually plays the scotch game with tempo less. So black plays as white um, and white plays with extra tempo, but not the very uh, best of the of the scotch game with the with this move d3. OK, that would be d6 uh, if we, you know, switch the colors. Uh, now we have e takes on d5, knight takes on d5 and now uh, another extravaganza by Chigorin. So uh, I'm not sure about that. Queen e2 attacking the pawn, uh, however, at the same time blocking the, the light square bishop. So what is the idea? Chigorin has the clear idea of uh, castling on the queen side, but it's not really recommended in this position. So what David Janowski answered? Knight c6. Pretty standard stuff. We have bishop d2, so... Chigorin wants to uh, definitely castle on the queen side, but the plan is not really great. What should he play instead? Something like g3, bishop g2, uh, maybe knight f3 or maybe knight uh, e2 in the future. Castle castle on the on the king side that's the recommendation not only for from stockfish nowadays but also uh, i was reading the the tournament book and th there are the, the recommendation over there uh, we have bishop e7 as janowski pretty obvious and now we have castle so chigorin follows his plan we have also castle and now another interesting move queen f3 actually blocking uh, the knight and um, the idea, of course, is bring the knight to, to e2. And in the tournament book, we have recommendation after them, they analyze that g3 with the bishop g2, uh, knight f3 should be played anyway. Uh, maybe some, some f4 moves in the future, but, uh, but try to play this way. 
Uh, however, it could be very difficult because after knight d4, this queen has to move somewhere. Uh, of course, defender of the pawn is, is, is moved, so uh, queen e5. Now knight c3, uh, bishop takes on c3, and now bishop f6 defending the, the knight, also attacking the queen. Uh, and queen can move to the h5 by g6 is coming or immediately bishop c5. Uh, and then after b6, uh, queen has to move somewhere. Queen a3 probably, bishop b7, and this bishop is first on this diagonal. Black has a really comfortable game. So recommendation, you know, from the book g3 is could be correct. However, it's very difficult to play this position already. This position is already very bad for white. Uh, another try would be knight f3. This is from Stockfish, but still, after rook e8, uh, knight e5 for free, uh, knight d4 with the attack on the queen, queen h5, maybe bishop uh, e6, and already you see uh, that harmony in the, in the black pieces position is is really great so uh, let's say rook e1 now knight b4 uh, you know attacking this pawn twice also attacking the pawn on c2 and it's a um, very difficult position to play by white but Mikhail Chigorin play queen f3 uh, as I said, this, this move is, is another strange move. However, he attacks, you know, the knight twice, so black has to react. So we have bishop e6, developing move, uh, defending this, this knight so there are no problems. We have knight g2 e2, now following the plan, and now f5, grabbing more space in the center. Uh, we have queen h3. Uh, now is the question why, to, why this move was played. Uh, probably f4. Uh, but after queen d6, uh, we have knight d5, queen d5, uh, and there is the, the attack on a2. So we have knight c3 attacking the queen and defending a2. Looks pretty much a uh, very, very good move, very logical move. But after queen a5, uh, we still have attack on a2. Uh, so what white can do? If they play king b1, the most obvious move, then actually black doesn't need to be hairy, you know, uh, rook a to d8, uh, and then what to play as white, try to find the plan, maybe something like f4, uh, but we always can have, you know, bishop b4, uh, the idea is to, of course, eliminate the, the defender of, uh, of the a2, and the point is that b3 also cannot be played because the, the knight is attacked twice. Okay, so uh, let's say after f takes on e5, bishop c3, bishop c3, queen a2, uh, and after b5, also b4 is coming, and so on. Black again has a decisive, you know, advantage in this position. Uh, but Chigorin didn't go even for this king b1, but he played a3. Uh, and, and I am not sure why he played this so many strange moves, you know, queen e2, then queen f3, then, you know, queen h3, then now we have a3, which is also inviting the sacrifice on a3 against the tactician like David Janowski. So what just happened? I just saw one comment that maybe Chigorin was celebrating already his victory in Hastings because he played against Janowski who, who was at the end and definitely that was not his the, the best of his tournaments uh, and also the last game uh, was also pretty easy he won uh, but because of this game he actually lost the chance to win that tournament huge drama in the tournament book we don't have information we just have information that every player uh, sometimes can have a uh, worst day. That's how they called. I found some comments here and there that maybe he was drunk at that time, but as Chigorin sometimes uh, drink, he was, you know, from Russia, so uh, why not to drink during the tournaments um, and so on. But this is not confirmed. So if you have more information about that, uh, maybe you can drop some comment. Uh, after A3, Janowski, of course, uh, pick up this pawn. Now, the point is that Bishop cannot be taken. 
because after queen a3 king b1 everything is quite forced knight b4 and we're gonna have a checkmate with the with the bishop on a2 uh, and at the end if the king is 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 hidden then uh, we're gonna have a checkmate from uh, from c2 square so rook c1 defending this pawn uh, and now rook f to d8 uh, just simply bring the rook to the a file and continue this this way so let's say queen e3 trying to bring queen to the to the closer to the defensive position rook d6 and then maybe d4 so the queen also could could support this move uh, and now the bishop controls a6 but it's not enough because now there is another checkmate bishop a2 uh, there is only actually one move uh, because that would be the checkmate so king a1 and now the black has a couple of ways to win. Probably the most spectacular would be knight d3, sacrifice this knight. The idea is uh, to remove any obstacles from the from the b file. And after, let's say, bishop d3, uh, then bishop c4 with check and king b1, rook b6. And that would be the checkmate as this is the only move. Uh, and this also is the defender, was the defender of the, uh, of the a, a2 square. So B, B takes on A3 is not possible. Uh, rook E1 making a space for the uh, king could be played, but still knight D4 is coming. Uh, the knight is closer and closer. Uh, and why doesn't have in the, even even any good moves let's say you know some f4 uh, and any other moves uh, would just you know end up the same bishop b2 sacrifice you cannot bring the the king to the d1 because uh that's gonna be a checkmate pretty much soon so king b2 uh, and then after queen b4 king c1 king queen a3 uh, king a1 a uh, queen a1 Bishop c1 saving from the checkmate but losing uh, this knight uh, and of course this is completely dominating position uh, of black pieces this rook gonna you know uh, come to the to the open files uh, d4 gonna be played and you know exchange the, the pawn on d3 and so on uh, it's completely you know winning for black so uh, this doesn't work this is why Chigorin play knight b1 but as I said any moves uh, leads to the same endings bishop b2 was played in the game king b2 uh, we had queen a2 king c1 and after knight d4 Mikhail Chigorin resigned and he resigned because we're gonna have a checkmate on c2 and white has nothing to do about that um, except the, the knight a3 but that's only prolongs that a bit so queen a3 king b1 uh, and after bishop a2 this checkmate which i mentioned before uh would you know could happen uh, and that would be also quite beautiful checkmate so after knight d4 Mikhail Chigorin resigned. So what a game. Uh, very mysterious. Uh, my belief is that maybe, yeah, Mikhail Chigorin had the worst day. That's uh, the, the tournament book uh, said the truth. And if you have any opinion about, about this game, uh, please share in your comment. And if you want to uh, see other games, uh, interesting games from the chess history, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.